I need to adjust my alarm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Better to do it now that, that we're, like, up and running as opposed to, you know, before when we were just farting around. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday night, America. Do you, do you have warm socks on this evening? Woohoo! Do they provide a Don't good like grip? Don't like around my window. Like it back snow. I saw that. I actually just I checked the radar in case there were, you know, there were any like last minute technical <laughs> difficulties and I needed to fill time. I was like, oh, let's let's see what the weather's doing. And uh, but it's only like thirty one. It only got to thirty two like uh, about three hours ago. So it's not really sticking to the ground yet. Now I mean, if it oh, well, shit, gets below thirty much colder overnight, than we are. it will. Um, but that remains to be seen because it, it's fluctuated throughout the day. It was high as 43, then down to 31, then back to 35. And, and it's just mainly been like pellets, like sleet or yep. slushy snow. Fortunately, no freezing rain. That I really don't want another ice storm with half inch ice accumulating on all the power lines and then having no power for, you know. Oh, weeks. that's yeah, that's going to be fun, especially I would imagine uh, they're not having to worry about it tonight, but down there in parts of uh, North Carolina and Tennessee, yeah, South Carolina, even uh-huh. like those storms they, are coming. They get really bad ice like around Greenville, South Carolina mm-hmm. and even Atlanta sometimes. Atlanta's gotten hit with some really that's bad what ice. That's what the Mid-Atlantic has gotten for, I don't know, the last 15 years at least, if not longer yeah. than that shit. When was it that my stepmother, I think it was 95, as a matter of fact, was when my stepmother broke her leg as a result of an ice storm and damn thing never healed right. She had to have it rebroken and reset like three times. It was a whole fucking oh ordeal for the rest of her life. But it was as a result of one of those first ice storms when they started happening. And like I said, that was mid-90s, but they yeah. became more frequent in the aughts and the teens. There was really bad ice storm in Huntington where, I mean, it knocked down every fucking tree. I, I was uh, delivering for Marco's Pizza at the time, and fortunately for me, I had a chainsaw and my long knife, my 38 inch machete but like when i started going down the road and after i chainsawed through because i was using the machete if it was four inches or smaller with one swing i could just cut it right in half with the machete because i keep it sharp enough to shave but when it was bigger than that or if it was like hickory or beech, you know rock maple or something then break out my little mini husky uh, husqvarna and so i you know after about 10 minutes, I've done cut through like, I don't know, probably at least 15, 20 trees. And I've only made it about maybe a city block, you know, maybe 100 yards. And so I just stopped and decided to walk down on the shoulder around all these fallen pines and stuff. And, uh, and went to scout the road ahead and realized like, there's fucking tree trunks like every 10 feet as far as the eye can see. And I was like, you know what? These people are like three miles down the road. They're not getting this pizza. Probably not. Not for a while. And when I take it, when I take it back to the store, they'll just throw it away. So I did the sensible thing and turned around and went to the pull off and got fucking baked and ate all the pizza and then came back and told them that the road was impassable. Did they did they ask where the pizza was? Oh, I told them I threw it away. Oh. Cuz they say did you throw the pizza away? Yeah, I threw it away. Oh, okay. And I did. I threw away that you know what I didn't eat before I walked in the door. Which they would have done the same thing if I would have brought in the whole pizza. They would have just took it back and thrown it away. Yeah, or somebody would have eaten it. And normally I, I wouldn't I eat worked the at pizza, pizza there. I know how that works. Normally I would have, wouldn't have eaten the pizza, but I was really fucking high. Because, I mean, you know, I, I sweated out. I totally ruined my buzz, cutting all these fucking trees down, doing Paul Bunyan shit. And then I'm like, God damn, I got to get my buzz back. And then 
as soon as I got fucking high, I'm like, the whole time I'm huffing this fucking pizza smell, you know, and like, I just like super fucking high. Like I can feel it in my eyeballs and my cheekbones. And I'm like, that is the best. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, I'm about to fuck that pizza up. And I'm just like, just like fucking sauce and cheese hanging off my face when I'm done, you know, and just like, ah, you know, when you're just totally fucking <laughs> pigging out, like, <laughs> and I look down, and I'm like, holy shit, I just ate that whole fucking pizza. Well, except for, you know, I threw a, all the like crust pieces back down, you know, just ate the good parts. <laughs> Ah, oh, I remember those days. I can't do that anymore. Too old. And then I talked to uh, the guy at EMS, the ambulance crew. And he was like, "Hell, we went to do a, a response down um, 4H Camp Road there, and we made it around the bend of Boot and Creek, and somebody had cleared out about the first quarter mile. They just quit. I was like, that was me. Half inch it, ice on everything. Yeah. Everything. And it just, I mean, it, it snapped. I mean, it's still fucked up all over through the timber stands. It's all fucked up. It's hard to find a pine tree anymore. A big one. You know, there's saplings, of course. But anyways. That's crazy. So, uh, like, the what, what kind of totals are you guys looking at? Do you know? Uh, because of the temperature fluctuation, I mean, that, all in all, it's probably only going to be a dusting of accumulation. I mean, it, it, it's like a snow globe outside, but because the ground is still around 32, 33 degrees, it's right. just not sticking on the dirt and the grass. It, well, it's on the grass blades that are above the ground, and all the vehicles in the parking lot are just completely covered with snow. But yet the black top is still melting it all off because it, it's going to have to get a little bit colder than 32 or 33 to actually get the shit to stick to the ground. Oh, yeah. And if it, if it never gets colder than that, we'll wake up in the morning. There'll be a couple of dustings here and there in the shadow and shade. But the rest of it will be gone at first light. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll still use it as a reason to uh, cancel school. You know, well, now all the kids never, are never sick. let a crisis go to waste. All the kids are sick, and then like my uh, all the kids like at your house or in the area. Yeah, yeah, like all the yonelings are sick. Oh, good lord! So one of them, one of them got something and passed it around. So what it sounds like? Yeah, it's well, it's RSV and maybe whooping cough and. That dreaded RSV that we still haven't been able to develop a, a an effective vaccine for. Damn it! Well, they they have a RSV vaccine now. Right. I was very careful in my word choice. Well, they they call it a vaccine, but then under international classification of disease code, it's referred to as vaccine slash gene therapeutic. So I'm going to go with gene therapy. I mean, does these COVID shots make me look sexy with my new jeans? Anyways, um, I mean, look at it. Look at it under a microscope. The luciferase glows. It's photophosphorescent. <laughs> well, they used to they used to say that about the radium in makeup too. Gives you yeah. a nice healthy glow. Got luciferase? <laughs> That's right. Well, how could you go wrong with something like that? I'm I'm starting to wonder if that might hail not- Satan. Yeah, that might not be tied to some of the bullshit that's going to be foisted upon us next year. You know, interesting thing. Um, like I started going down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole uh, Ooh, when I was going one? to pick up an order at um, BW3s, Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, and yeah. I know BW3s. Probably half of the audience knows that. I I understand the Buffalo, New York, and the Wild Wings part, but I'm still not sure what the fuck the WEC is. The WEC? Buffalo, Wild Wings, and WEC, or BW3. 
I don't know what WEC is either. I've never heard that before right now. I don't know. I didn't even know WEC was a thing, but then Buffalo Wild Wings and WEC happened. Well, of course, I had to ask somebody what the fuck Riz was, too. So. Well, you There's know that. what Ratchet is. You know, you know about keeping it Ratchet, though. Yeah, You're yeah. not that far out of the loop. Come on. No. Give yourself some credit. Come on. Yeah. I know, I know some of the, the jargon that the kids like to throw around these I'm days. You. Buffalo Wild Wings, originally called Buffalo Wild Wings and WEC, and nicknamed BW3 or B Dubs or BWW. Now, I've never heard anybody call it BWW. So, Buffalo Wild Wings and WEC. Why was it called Buffalo Wild Wings? The WEC in the original title refers to beef on WEC, a sandwich originally served at the restaurant. Within six months of opening, the pair bought an additional. Blah, 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 blah. So, do they have a WEC sandwich? I don't remember one being on the menu. Beef on WEC. The sandwich consists of hot roast beef on a Kummel WEC roll studded with kosher salt and caraway seeds beef on weck roll a kummel weck okay that's not sounding that, delicious yeah that, that sounds, sounds like inappropriate Oregon in my mouth this a is a family Kummelweck show roll? remember that I, I honestly i didn't i didn't plan for that we can edit this out well, we'll get it in post. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, that's, you know, it's I'm not really in the me. not really in the mood for um cayenne pepper sauce wings at this point. Eh. I'm more of a dry rub kind of guy. <laughs> I figured as much. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're in the balcony. We're not in the Muppet show. We're 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 cracking on the show from the balcony. Uh, I'm I'm telling you, Yona. There's uh, our audience is is much larger than you realize, oh, much larger oh, it, than I realize. Yeah, that that's not surprising. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons they hate us so much. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, I don't get a lot of people asking to be guests on my show, and. I'm never asked to be a guest on anybody's show. And why would I? What the fuck do I know? What kind of life have I lived? I mean, the more important question is, what can I do to enhance other people's uh, rise to fame and pseudo-celebrity? And Mm. the answer is jack shit. Hence, yeah, I'm not. I mean, you know, when I, people have asked me to come on their shows, I've, I've done the shows, and, and it has lots of views, and, you know, and open invitations are there to go back to these shows, but, like, why would I call them and be like, hey, let, let me come on your show again? If they want me to come on the show, well, all right. I'm not, I, you know, I just... I don't really give a fuck what other people think. I think that's my problem. But it works for me. I wasn't aware that was a problem. Works for me. I I just kind of get so high that I just really don't give a fuck at all. Fuck it, we ball. You know, it. It's it's more than just a motto. It's a life path. It's a lifestyle decision. Really, think about it. You you completely disconnect from the affective domain. And focus on cognitive shit, because logic kind of makes sense that way. Am I right, Tony Myers? I mean, you know, it's this shit with the manipulation and the logical fallacies and stuff. Anymore, it's just just boring. Mm-hmm. Boring. It's it's um it's, it's repetitive for one. It's amateur, which makes it transparent. Yeah, yeah. It's very amateur. Well, because I mean. It, there, there's really only about four or five prompt commands in that whole program. And so, like you say, it, it all of a sudden you realize, oh, shit, that, that's all that we've only got about five or six program responses on this topic. 
And now we're going to the default. Oh, syntax error again. Oh, I need to reword my question. Oh, wrong tone of voice, right? Anyway. Yeah, we, we've we covered that in previous episodes. Although this why is a, you, this is a why nice, are you so uh, hostile? Yo, what do you like, call why it? Why are you so angry? Culmination. Like, I think that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, or consummation. But there you go. I think yes. I believe that was Things actually the one I was fruition. grasping for. I'm a little bit go. high this it's evening. Hard. You know, it is it is a cause for celebration. You know, we've reached uh, number fifty. Shit, I was looking for new podcasts to listen to the other day. Yeah, I was looking for new Holy podcasts shit. to listen to the other day, uh, just around music. I was like, let's go and see, like, who else is just focusing on music right now? Dude, there ain't shit out there. I was seeing shit with, like, three episodes, six episodes, 12 episodes from, like, seven years ago. It's nothing. Wow. It's, it's a fucking wasteland. Like, our lane is completely wide open. Well, that's great, man, because I've been shitting out some serious fucking club bangers. And now that I've figured out Master Bus and mastering the mix and everything, I say figure out in that I'm at least able to manipulate it. I have by no means mastered it. I'm only scratching at the surface. But with each song... You know, I try to get better with the uh, the levels and the mixing and, you know, no more clipping of the bass. And, it, and you know, a lot of that has to do with Dead Fellows hooking me up with these monitor speakers with the bass woofers and stuff. Hmm. And the PreSonus, uh, what is that called? Uh, PreSonus Audio Box. Oh, yeah, yeah. that got the XLR plug-ins for microphone mm-hmm. and got the MIDI cable plugins in the back for my uh, Yamaha Steinberg uh, keyboard piano. Yeah, I have I have one of those running my monitor line right now. Yeah. And and of course I, I can mix the levels on it as well. Mm-hmm. Um and so uh what's cool is like um not only the things that I can do in PreSonus with the uh like the jazz and the swing and like the acoustic or folk or I don't know. I don't know what fucking label to put on some of these songs. I just make the songs, let somebody else figure out what the fuck it's called. But, um, you know, with um, being able to record at metronome with MIDI and then re-instrument parts, um, you know, my brother was showing me, you know, a lot of these guys, just with the click of a mouse and they're just dropping notes on staff with the click of a mouse yeah drag and And they don't copy and paste and yeah they're not performing with the fingers any type of music like they're not no they're not actually playing an instrument unless you consider a computer to be an instrument which i don't music rather than performing it and what's weird is like i first programmed music when i was doing music composition my freshman year at the arch abbey seminary in indiana using cakewalk as in 92 1992 um and it was kind of neat but when i finally came full circle and, and went to making my own electronic music still now i just prefer to play each part on the piano and you know if i don't like the preset that's on the piano then i'll use one of the presets from the contact seven portable library or whatever and if i don't have it i'll reach out to dead bell and he'll find it in some russian fucking website and send it to me for free um and then rather than like loop i'll play the 16 bar and the 16 bar and then the eight bar chord and then so I'll play each track stem from beginning to the end of the song rather than taking sections and like copy paste and loop. It just it's very weird like I'm I'm using the new software and everything but yet I'm still constructing the music 
in a very analog fashion. Okay. Because like, and and so you know, like if there's, I don't eight, see like a problem these, with that though. Like some why, of these songs, is that there may be supposed eight to be a bad thing. So I play for like, if it's like a techno song, it'll be like seven or eight minutes, and I'm sitting here and ding 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 doing another thing and and going through and just layering it right layer by layer by layer playing it from beginning to end um and so you know that's something i'm looking forward to of like well what happens when i do like take parts apart and rearrange it so that's what i started doing earlier today with my song um wired to the max because like it wasn't even seven minutes long and there's kind of a seven minute rule with trance and house music like it's got to be over seven minutes in order for your jaw to really go numb from the molly so um i was like i, I really didn't know that was a rule it. yeah yeah okay it's got to be over seven minutes or it's not side train in, in order for the full spell to take effect you gotcha know, it's gotta be over seven minutes um and so I did that and, you know, pulled parts out, and copied. And then I was like, oh, wow, well, these are the measure lines. So I can just copy, I can select the whole goddamn thing and slide it over. And now I can add all, just, oh, my God, it's so much easier using Studio One than Audacity for being able to move it over. And then, then you know, I was like, well, I, I, this is eight bar, this is 12 bar, that's 16 bar. I can drop these in here and then I'll, take the four bars off here and throw it at the end and it was wild cutting up my own stuff like that hmm. but, you know and, and you know it's it's it, you know i'm just remixing what i've already played well yeah but, but it's just it's a different way to do the same thing you were already doing mm -hmm. which again is not necessarily a bad thing because you can apply that to it's you just know. a different creative method. Yeah. That's all. A different tool. Granted, coming, that's coming at the same problem a different from a different angle. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's how we learn new shit, isn't it? I thought that's what, what, what we used to call uh uh what is it? Um innovating. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm here lately I'm just fascinated with like all of the the video game noises when I go to make the dance music you know whether it's uh Mario or Pac-Man or Coleco Vision or you know song after song that and I've been going through a lot of um sitcom music and stuff like I was working on MacGyver again today I haven't released that yet who doesn't love MacGyver? <laughs> and then uh, I did finish um, Miami Vice or Miami Mice, um, Crockett and Tubbs. And then uh, there's the one with Ernest P. Worrell and uh, Sophia Petrillo from Golden Girls. Boo Giddy. Um, Red Fox from Sanford and Son, which I think I think we did that on here. Um, then, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, we did. Strolling down, strolling down the old memory lane there with the situational comedy stuff and sitcoms of the seventies and eighties, um, which what's weird is like, um, like for example, the the Olivia Newton John remix, "Let's Get Physical," "Happy Work" remix. When I when I first got done making that song, I was which like, was a crowd favorite, by the way, I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I when I first got done with it, I was like, man, I I don't really like this. I, not really. Eighties music is just. I don't know what it is, dude. People love it. People I'm absolutely not love really it. I remember feeling the being 80s alive music. in the eighties and and listening to it and being like, no, this isn't good. There's got to be yeah. better music out there. Yeah, and I was because right. the music in the seventies was better, and the music in the sixties was even better than the music in the seventies. And well, I mean, like, depending. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends on what genre and artist you're talking about. Right. But when when I listened to it like the third or fourth time, 
It was the little movie clip that I'd used when I was making the music video from the bridge over River Kwai where the Japanese Colonel Saito keeps reminding his prisoner of war um, labor force. Um, what is it? Uh, let me remind you of General Yamashita's motto. Be happy in your work. I was like, hmm. oh, that, that, that's got to be the hook for this whole fucking song. So then I went back <laughs> and took the Good worker audio. Good work a happy worker. Um, yeah. And, and turn the whole thing into like a, and all of a sudden now the whole song is about, um, we're all working at a POW camp, building a railroad for the Japanese Imperial Army. That's um, right. Happy work. Happy work. <laughs> and, and now I love happy it. Happy work like makes it, joy. It, it's got this, you know, that, that, that's what a hook does in a song. It, you know, it. It, it it becomes the song, and so now when I hear that song, that song is all about the five different Japanese people that are on that song, and not Olivia Newton John. But to everyone else hearing that song, all they're hearing is like a a poppy synthy remix of "Let's Get Physical," where I chop right. the fuck out of it during the chorus, you know. Right, um, but you're actually like embedding time bombs in their subconscious. That will oh, go yeah. off at an undetermined date in the future, and that's deliberate. That that's premeditated oh, and yeah. deliberate. As <laughs> part of part of the foundation of Liberty Radio, what are you talking about? Um, same thing with the dancing uh, raccoon and the squirrel, Peanut and Fred. You know, and subliminally in the background, you've got Swamp Coffin with the scream vocals. You know, and, so- and there are Nobody's times gonna fucking save you. Yeah, there are times where I I think it's a real shame that these are the tactics that we've been reduced to. But then again, it, we're we didn't start the shit. So I understand that, you know, fighting fire with fire has the potential to just burn everything to the ground. I'm okay with that. I've made peace with that. That's fine. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's get it over with. So, um, did you know that um, drinking water is racist? I had a feeling it was coming eventually. Because it was just, it wasn't even two years ago that they finally admitted that drinking milk was racist. So I was like, you see, there's a lot of next. Peppy the Frog memes where Peppy Um, is drinking a glass of water. Is is it because of Pepe? Pepe is what made water racist? Yes, Pepe made water racist so and a frog Because Pepe made the water frog racist. is a Nazi. He celebrates Nazism. Right? Pepe is a the, retard. The, these are actual articles that have been written in the Chicago Tribune and the New York Times and the WAPO and like Are you shitting me? That's why that's why folks, that's why we call this the clown shit future time. Fucking now clown. I'm understanding why so many people unsubscribed from the Washington Post. Is that what they're trying to pass off as journalism nowadays? Yeah. No, that, you could always tell yeah. when the article was not written by AI because it's so stupid. <laughs> Only the good articles are written by AI now. You can tell all the ones that are written by the. I, I guess we'll use humans. Who like who even uh, are these people anymore? Like is uh, sure Woodward? Would is he still it. working? Is he still uh, shilling for money, publishing Who's bullshit? Shilling? Woodward, Bob Woodward. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Intelligence oh. favorite media personality, Bob Woodward. Why does it smell like mothballs and Tanqueray gin now? Oh, my God. Oh. And, you know, I have a he feeling was the he one was that actually was Alan talking Dulles to Deep Throat boy. at the fucking parking garage by the Watergate Hotel where the, you know, the, the weathermen committee to reelect the president. Nixon's fucking plumbers and weathermen went in and fucking 
broke into the George McGovern campaign DNC headquarters, and there's Bob Woodward going to the fucking parking garage and getting his info from Deep Throat. Oh, it was it was <clears throat> scoop of a lifetime, Yona. It, it was right. uh, just a uh, completely random uh, that that it was him that it happened to. You know that, right? What are the chances? What are the odds? I mean, what are, what are the odds, Yona? Come on, it now. was his lucky break. That's right. And after like that, when, uh, his name was like on when, the uh, Hillary Rodham, an up and coming uh, lawyer wannabe and legal aid, got the nod and the tap from special prosecutor John Dean to be on their legal team to prosecute Nixon and to go after the, the Watergate and the White House tapes that Nixon had and everything. And uh, I was not aware of that. Well, then John Dean found out that information kept getting leaked to Nixon and the committee to reelect president or creep, as it were. I love these names, you know, Haldeman and Ehrlichman and I mean, it, it was, Oliver North and times. Point Dexter. And yeah. these guys would go on to do other cool shit like Iran Contra. But anyways, yeah. um, <laughs> so. Where was I? Um, uh, Hillary Rodham, John Dean. So Hillary Rodham, the president. That come to find out, John Dean finds out that it's Hillary Rodham who's going back and telling Nixon and feeding them information from the inside of the John Dean prosecution team. Right, because she's a pot stirrer. Always has been. But I mean, at that time, she was still Hillary Rodham and. Just after being kicked off the Watergate um, prosecution team, she would then end up representing a guy that raped, I think, a 12-year-old in Arkansas. Um, and That sounds about right. And that's kind of like where she ended up uh, getting her um, bona fides as a completely ruthless lawyer uh, and then got hitched to Bubba. And became an Arkansas Walmart queen. Correct. Correct. She became uh, America's uh, uh, first lady. Remember? That's right. Like, because um, I, I don't remember, like, Barbara Bush being real prominent. Other than, like, they, they'd wheel her out every so often so she could just, like, wave and, and stare at the camera and smile. But Hillary was front and center. And then when it came oh, yeah, to yeah. 1993, I mean, when after Bill Clinton played the saxophone and all the woot, woot, woots at the Arsenio Hall. Oh, she, Hall was, she was out there campaigning about the, the super predators. And we, right. need, we and need these prisons. No we need conscience. These police no officers. empathy. We they need must these be M-raps. brought to heel, Drizzle. Yeah. We got, we got to knock some sense into these fucking kids. Yeah. Three strikes and you're out, boy. And blam, next thing you know, Geo Group and CCA and this whole private prison industry just blossoms like Mayan Blaley. Right. Uh, right right alongside uh, gangster rap and the, the East-West beef. The, the and East-West uh, CIA yeah. rap war. That's right. Because uh, turns out rap was co-opted by the CIA. <laughs> Spoiler alert. What? Wait, what? No, Yona, come what on. Hasn't are, been you, are you trying to yeah. tell me that they did the same thing to uh, the hip-hop movement that they did to the hippie movement back in the 60s? Are you trying to tell me it was the exact same plan? I would compare Bone Thugs and Harmony. To the mamas and the papas, yes. See, yes, I was going to say I Crosby, definitely. Stills, and Nash, but yeah. Don't leave off Young. Remember yeah. when Neil Young got all pissy about Joe Rogan and Spotify? Yes. So he pulled all his shit from Spotify? Right. Well, guess what? Spotify was like, He's we back on care. Spotify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Doesn't matter now. He's trying to sell some records. Fuck it. It's all good. But I don't think Joe Rogan is on Spotify anymore, is he? Or is he still? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really follow Joe Rogan because he's kind of boring to me. 
Well, I don't. Yeah, and I mean, I it'd I be different if he was I funny but for uh, for podcasts. That, did you see Joe Rogan's last stand-up routine? No. Oh, good. Then don't. Okay. Um, you didn't. Good. Miss that, that was time. Uh, well, not invested. Awesome. In fact, I think it was uh, Steve Poikin uh, had the video clip where um, Joe Rogan is sitting on the couch with um, Tom Green. My bum is on your lips, Tom Green. Right, right. MTV. Some been, weird Canadian. YouTube has been trying to get me to watch one of his videos. And this was like, I want to say... 2006 or 2007 when Joe Rogan is on the couch. I'm watching this clip that Steve had up and you can literally see like in the, you know, like in the cartoons where there's like a cloud over their head and you can see the gears grinding in their head. Like, like, cause Tom Green is explaining to Joe Rogan what the fuck a podcast is. And Joe Rogan's like, well, I should do a podcast. Yeah, like literally, like we're watching in real time. Like, yeah, like Tom Green is the one that planted the seed. Hmm. Joe Rogan's like, fuck comedy. I'll do a podcast. I can be funny like Tom Green. More weird than funny. Yeah, well, Tom Green always was more weird than funny. Right, I, mean, that's, I think that's, he had the right idea. That's my thumbnail for Tom Green. Funny, but more weird than anything. Well, I think I think he had the right idea. I think Adam Curry had the right idea. I don't know which one Joe Rogan took it from, but it wasn't his idea originally. It's just he's been doing it longer than most anybody else. I was actually thinking about that earlier today. Yeah. Like, all of the stuff that is revered nowadays, media-wise, is less than 20 years old. All of it. Some wow. of it's less than five years old. Like, how, how you go from, from being, like, working for corporate news to being a, a disgraced real estate swindler to then, like, one of the, the most watched programs and independent media how how the fuck does that equation work does anybody know has have they figured it out yet can we get einstein on that maybe well i think in order for that to be successful in the u.s you need aid um, i'll just put it that way yeah like uh what does usaid stand for again uh i know the id is international development I think it's assistance in international development. Yeah. 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 That, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Which, again, it's a very clever play on words because you're going to assume that development means what you think it means. Well, in this, in this case, USAID just means CIA shell companies because that well, money's that's what not they've always been. Itself. Yeah. <laughs> They've only Am ever right, been a cutout anyway. for the intelligence agency. Yeah. Because, I mean, you have to launder the money, and then you, you've got your Voice of America and your, your whole influence operation. Hmm. And so what we've seen now, picking up where we left off, um, I've just been beating around the bush, but we're getting to it. Um, it's called And that play. is... It's all about how can we influence your desires, influence your wants. Inf and so, of course, it's all about preying upon the affective domain and emotional manipulation. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, keep up with the Joneses. Light, light up those liberty torches, ladies. Um, all of this constant devotion to psychological research of the human mind and how can we control the mind and you know so that gets us to dr green aka um mangala mm -hmm. who was at um what is it the salt flats there 
when they were doing the MK Ultra experiments on mind control mm-hmm. and mind manipulation. And so um, we see that today, like with uh, all the conversation I was just in, where they were talking about the the kid up in Canada who had, a, it's funny because, you know, the joke in the United States for a long time was, I have a Canadian girlfriend that's a pen pal, but in this case, this is a Canadian boy, I think in Ontario, and his girlfriend online turned out to be a bot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Real person. Dun, 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 dun. But the bot encouraged him to just go kill yourself. And right. he killed himself, and they now did. the family is suing the uh, the bot. And so, you know, the the quintessential question of our what kind time of assets here. does this bot have? Holy shit! Well, to me, it, it it's again they are experimenting with mind control and virtual reality. And you know, I mean, there there comes a point in time when you know. It's nice to verify if shit's real or or not real, you know. I I really get a kick out of being accused of being a bot whenever I'm in chats. um, Really? I don't know of any other bots that use Cherokee script, but uh, I guess I'm the first. (laughs) I think people just like to try and throw labels around to see what sticks to other people. And of course, a lot of it's projection too. I mean, I would expect the first Much thing of a bot is, yeah. would do when coming into chat would be saying that, "Hey, you're a bot." Well, that's okay, why I always Cole, say, you know. if if you really want to know something about people, just listen to them. They yeah. will tell you everything you want to know. I mean, it's just like the guy that gets on the elevator and is like, "Ooh, who farted?" It's like, okay, motherfucker, smellers the feller, buddy. <laughs> I'm on to you. Which I'm normally that guy. I'm normally the guy that gets on the <laughs> elevator, just because I see like I already made it to my floor, but I see the other ele- other elevators going down. It's got five people on it, so I just jump on there and immediately, <laughs> oh, who farted? <laughs> All right, so I guess we should probably get down to uh, the big news that came down this morning. The, the are, thing are, that, are we going to get into the uh, tickle the everybody's pussy today? Yeah. Yoav Gallant or Gallant or however yeah. you say it. And Satan Yahoo. Yeah. Satan and his minion. But I don't think Yoav Gallant is defense minister anymore. Didn't he? Like, no, he got fired. Yeah, he got fired because he, was he fired. wasn't killing enough. I don't I don't know exactly what the reason was, but it was uh I think it was selection day, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. He was fired. And like, look, here he thought he was all right, well I guess I'm I'm going to go retire now cuz I'm I'm unemployed and I'm old. You know, who's going to who's going to hire somebody like me? I'll probably just have to wait to die now. And maybe he's not going to have to wait that long. The ICC warrant is not an Interpol warrant. What is it? And I don't think there is an ICC police like there is with Interpol where with an Interpol warrant, you know, France or Poland or somebody else could pick you up and ship you back to the United States on an Interpol warrant. But with an ICC warrant, now that falls upon the discretion of each member country to the ICC as to whether or not they will enforce an ICC warrant using their own um, arms of their state power. So, so effectively, what I'm hearing is that these two gentlemen are now bargaining chips. Yeah. If, if they happen to be in the wrong country at the wrong time. Right. Interesting. And so Interesting. I don't see like Satan Yahoo or Yoav Gallant falling for the old MacGuffin like our uh, Telegram. I was just did. thinking of Pavel when, Durov, uh, yeah. When uh, Emmanuel Macron invited lunch? him. Lunch? Oh, here. sure. I'd love to have lunch. Now come over and uh, have, a, have a little dejeuner with me, monsieur. 
And then, you know, when he was playing lanes at Paris Orly Airport, blam, they fucking snatch him and throw him in jail. Yeah. Because, you know, censorship. Ooh la la. <laughs> well, and also that's that's how government does it. You know. Or it's like when uh, lure you in with something appealing and then beat you over the head. Or like remember that time when Trump lured in Qasem Soleimani to the Baghdad airport? To help negotiate a peace treaty, and and, blew uh, him up. and so they killed him at the Baghdad airport while yeah. he was on a peace mission, on the express invite of the United States to be a peace negotiator. Yeah, that's how we do it. That's the American way, Yona. And and did we already go over the attackums, the the long range missiles? I heard one to, of uh, them fell apart mid-air. That's how yeah. effective they were. Actually, it, it yeah. part fell out of the sky and hurt a dude or killed a dude, I guess. I don't know. Well, the thing that is, the, the key takeaway is, at least that was built with materials from only preferred vendors. What a relief. There is a government contracting a process. <laughs> and I'm sure that the uh, the carbon credits were fully paid for as well. How do you think we ended up with the $1,500 toilet seats, Drizzle? Come on. $1,500? Oh, shit. And, and I, you did hear the news from the Pentagon. Uh, oh, the, failed they failed their seventh again. consecutive <laughs> audit? Yeah. Yeah. Did we go what over else? that last week? I don't know if we did. No, I think that just came out within the last couple of days. But again, it's one of those things where if you're actually paying attention as time goes by, you're like, it, this is not surprising. This isn't even news. This is the same thing that you reported last time. Like the exact yeah. same thing. Like, do they really think that our memory is that short? Are we yeah. supposed to be that fucking stupid? Yes, it's all about amnesia. Forget reality, embrace virtual reality. Hmm. Live your and, best you fantasy. Know, to life. me, okay. Voting is the greatest fantasy football ever invented for the Americans. I mean, you In can act ways. like you're a part of the team, and you know. But when the team's walking off the court, you're like that poor kid with the hand down for Stephon Curry, and they all just walk past. Everyone knows the meme. Well, in you got many the arm ways, out there, you're waiting for the high five, and you're, you're going to be waiting all day. Yeah, but in many ways, American politics is modern day gladiatorial combat. Yeah, it's just without without the actual like viscera. Well, it's taken on a different patina altogether. It it's it's got that rustic patina now, where before. Politics was just an ideological type thing, but you couldn't disambiguate your neighbors politically simply based upon what medicine they may use hmm. or what clothes they may wear. But now it's like well, thank literally goodness somebody created identitarianism. Then everything, everything has been politicized. Hmm? Nothing more so than speech itself to the point that, again, my favorite modern pejorative has got to be truthiness and truther. Hmm. Oh, you're, 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 you're one of those truthers, right? Like, like uh, I've seen myself described in a couple of places as a truth musician. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I think it's supposed to Sounds be... Sounds a little weird. Truth musician. Truth rapper. A another one. Truth rapper. It's like... So does that mean Trump? I mean, again, all I I'm just sensing varying gotcha. levels and, and flavors of pejorative I, all I over the world. I can see the, the, the branding conundrum there, yeah. And it's like, well... If you're not a truth rapper, then what's the alternative? A bullshit rapper? A mumble rapper? Because there, there is mumble rapper. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I'm not apparently. sure what he said, but it was apparently rap. Right. I guess. I don't know. He was mumbling the whole time. 
Um, but I'm sure it's fire, but you just can't. I don't know what it when is. When hip hop first emerged as a as a musical form in its own right, and it was underground music, it was full of fucking political message. Mm-hmm. I mean, speaking of message, take the song "The Message" itself by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Don't stop, right? Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. We're trying not to lose our heads. Ha, 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 ha. I forgot all the words to it. That was a lot of it, yeah. Yeah. Makes me wonder how I keep them going under. Ha, 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 ha. But, I mean, and the, the narrative, and it, it, it's just nothing but truth bombs hmm? in that song. That's like pure, pure hip-hop. And, and so that, you know... That to me is the challenge uh, with the music I'm trying to make now is to bring more truth to music, but I don't really see it as truth music being a genre into itself. But I guess if you're talking about like Tom McDonald and Rice and Gray, again, it, it, it immediately starts secreting Cheeto dust or something. It's like maybe truth musician is written in a Cheeto dusty font. Maybe mm. 24 size, 24 point. But I don't know. Again, that sounds like a branding issue. That's yeah. Uh, that's a different department. I don't work for that department. But the the point being words itself and nothing more than truth itself is constantly under attack. And I feel like, to go back to our earlier word, consummation, the consummation of the state um, acknowledging its supremacy in misinforming, disinforming, malinforming, and mind reforming had to be the uh, arrival upon stage of Scary Poppins. What was her name? Jankowitz or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Janky Witch. Janky Witch. And um She's still around. Scary Poppins. And you know, the 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 fact that there's actually a fucking communist politburo thought police making all the lists of wrong speech and wrong think and wrong words. Mm-hmm. And, oh, you said one of the wrong words, so say goodbye to your fourth YouTube channel. Uh, DJ Hi Yona, fuck off. Right. Yeah, okay, whatever you do. Whatever. J- yeah, James I still Corbett haven't, was talking I still about haven't figured out you. I still haven't figured out how the engagement goes down, but the follower count goes up. How does that work? <laughs> I don't, well, if you I don't can't believe that. their metrics and numbers, what can you believe? Uh-huh. Anything else. So again, a false dichotomy. Yeah. I, I don't trust their numbers because I know that it it's nature itself is meant to manipulate. The whole point of mining and scraping everyone else for data is so that they can create what seems to be authentic data on their own part when they're just trying to mimic and mirror us it's, it's like a cloaking yeah they can cloak themselves and so uh, that that to me is basically what those lovely nudging influencers are hmm. all across the because you're talking about you know all these pseudo celebrities and shows and podcasts like like uh hmm. Legends is, is in their Clayton, own minds, yeah. Is, is it Clayton Morris, the uh, the, the flim yes. flam swindler guy? Yes, yeah. that's one of the And, and the, the, real the work estate wife fraudsters. that he just browbeats on every episode. Yes. God, that poor work wife. Natalie. Natalie yeah, without Natalie. an E. Yeah. It's actually poor like Natalie. Natalie. Right. Right. Which, again, is very revealing. Well, it, it did have an E, but he said she had to lose it, and he paid for it to be surgically removed. Poor, poor, poor Natalie. 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 Um, 
At, at least they're making enough money now to where she no longer has to shave his rim. He, Apparently, I don't. I don't know if they signed one of those deals with Rumble or not. Yeah, but I wouldn't be. Well, surprised. I'm sure Peter Thiel probably kicks in for the the Brazilian. Probably, probably. On the bunk, on the yeah, well, I mean, that's yeah. all. That's all part of his ecosystem. So that would uh, that would make perfect sense, quite honestly. And he's and got the money to throw around. I mean, uh, Morris, Kissinger gave it to him. Clayton Morris has to have a business card with at least three different types of font. Embossed, glossy, and probably got texture. It could even be leather. It could he could even have some leather on and I guarantee they're scented. Scented business card. Leather business card would be a bold move. Yeah. Yeah. It's very bold. I would consider it, depending I, on on what business I was in. Yeah. Especially like then, if I and was then in. Then with it like having the, you, it's got to have the raw hide furnishings. A good musk, you know what I'm saying? You pull that out of your wallet, and you're like, wow, hmm, that's manly. Yeah. Let's do business. Give me a good firm handshake, there, sir. Put it right that's there. Right. You have to overwhelm people's senses, Yona. And then they'll just agree with whatever you put in front of them. I learned that during my time in sales. Yeah. I had a killer business card myself. So uh, I guess Satan is just going to continue his uh, campaign of death and destruction uh, across the Middle East. Because nothing's well, nothing's going to be done. Let's see. Um... Well, I saw because um, we're going to be oh, remember we're going to be off for Bernie. like two well, weeks, so we got to we got to prognosticate was, uh, a little bit. I mean, you saw Bernie Sanders and a collection of Democratic senators, um, all um, Bernie is still alive? off of the sinking ship of Zionism to say that they're going to do um, a joint motion of disapproval. Uh, and a strong wagging of the finger from the Senate, if they can get the votes for it, that it's a violation of the Foreign Arms Assistance Act to be giving these weapons to Israel, knowing that Israel is using them to commit genocidal crimes against humanity. Um, and so it's all posturing and I guess, you know, right. they've been on the wrong side of history for so long now. I mean, why even bother with this completely symbolic nothing burger where they're never going to get the votes for it? Because the Democrats don't even have the majority in the Senate and lost even more seats in the so called election results. Unverifiable for the fake government. But, anyways, um, then we saw in Spain. Uh, arms embargo, uh, Ireland, complete arms embargo, and France said no more arms to Israel. And so it, it's coming really? up to a point where, and, and you know, again, I, I began with the posturing. I guess it's a by good thing Bernie they've Sanders. got that secret deal with Russia then. Um, oh, did I say that like, out loud? Oh, oh. Well, now, mind you, Russia is the world's number two arms dealer. Right, behind Eric oh. Schmidt. So if you're not getting the guns from the Amerikanskis, then you got to get them from the Ruskis. Otherwise, what's left? Canadian arms? Chinese. British arms? Oh, yeah, Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, China's number three. I forgot about that. And India has a huge Chinese AK industry. is decent. A lot of money in, in selling um, bullets and bombs. A lot of money. Yeah, well, and, and autonomous weapon systems as well. Uh, again, shout out Eric Schmidt. You know, um, oh, which so I, much I of heard, the uh, I, U.S. I heard, you know, junk arsenal has been given to the Ukraine. Yeah. I don't think there's much left in the U.S. 
I heard so, earlier today I mean, Israel uh, almost admitted to having uh, autonomous killing drones. Almost. They almost admitted to it. They said that, that the technology exists and that it's, it's uh, something that they would consider. Well, that means they already have it and they're already using it. But they didn't say that. Seems kind of like an admission to me. I mean, it's the same thing like a Guido when the Guido says, hey, it's a nice, uh, nice place you got here. Yeah, it'd be a shame if anything terrible happened to something it. Terrible, yeah. something bad should happen to it. I mean, you know, he didn't say he's going to break your windows, but he is tapping a baseball bat in his hand while he's telling you this. So, you know, you're able to kind of put two and two together and you just pay him the payoff money and he'll be back next week. You know, I would honestly be interested to go to Israel right now. Like, if I were to get an all-expenses-paid trip for a week in Israel, I'd be like, okay, I'll go do that. I want to go check out what it's like over there right now. I mean, it might not be the safest time to travel there, but I'm interested to see what daily life is like there. Um. Before you book those tickets, you might want to have a talk with my friend Jimmy Lafredo and ask him what it's like over there in uh, Israel. Oh, you mean Jeremy? He just got back. Or was it Jeremy Lafredo? Yeah. Yeah. Because Jeremy spoke in class about what the Mossad did to him. What did they do to him? Because that does not come across my radar. I don't get to see stuff like that. Well, apparently the Mossad got him to open up. Uh, officially. Uh, by officially, I mean orifice by orifice. Anyway. So, like a flower. We're talking Mossad, which is little hat, pervert, Satan, sacrifice, ritual type people. So, I mean, remember the red heifers? Yeah, those people. It's it's it, it's a special type of militarized society where ethno supremacy is such the norm that Yoav Gallant was not butchering enough. Um, you, when you listen to uh, Norman Finkelstein break this down, he'll tell you like uh, most of the Israeli voting public in this militarized state where there's. Um, mandatory conscription, mandatory military service by all men men and women born in there. Um, you can't get out of it. Uh, no. And no. If you're a citizen, it's compulsory. It's compulsory. Um, what is it? Two and, years minimum, I think? I think it's at least two years service in, yeah. in the Israeli military. Um, and so it's it's a militarized society that lives under constant martial law. It's not the only democracy in the Middle East. It's the only complete non-democracy in the Middle East, other than all the other sultanates and kingdoms, you know. So in that regard, it's not really different. I mean, I see a lot of similarities between, um, let's say, for example, uh, royal crown, uh, royal Saudi prince, um, uh, what's his name, Mohammed bin Salman, and uh, Bibi Satan Yahoo. And for that matter, um, Bishop Tayyip Erdogan, uh, uh, the leader of, um, how do they say it now? It's not Turkey anymore. They, they spell it different now. It's like uh, Turkey, yay, or I'll, I'll have mine with dressing and cranberries. You know, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Next Thursday. Next week, yeah. Next week, as a matter of fact. It's a holiday still, apparently, even though they're trying to overtake it with Black Friday. Ooh, by, and I've by got doing Black my, Friday uh, on Thursday. But we're not, we're not going to be here date. next week, folks, so don't, uh, don't plan on that. But we will be back the week after that. I've got my trial for marijuana possession and marijuana paraphernalia next week. Oh, Tuesday. shit. Have you, been, uh, have you been studying for this? November the 26th. and. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, it's so next it's week. punishable with fine and uh, jail time. So that's Tuesday, November twenty sixth at seven p.m. Seven p.m. Yeah, because it's night court at Cerrito Municipal Court, which is overseen by a magistrate who does have a high school diploma. Yeah, is he a magician? Because magisterial judges are over the municipal courts. And in West... See, I don't think any other states recognize magisterial courts of West Virginia because magistrate judges don't even have to pass a bar exam or anything. All they have to have to run to be magistrate judge is a high school diploma. That's it. What about if they have uh, GED? Does that work? I, I would say there's probably some magistrates that have GED'd their way in. Okay. I can a work GED with that. Is, a, is a diploma equivalent. So Correct. I don't see Correct. a grade equivalency diploma. So there you go. Shows that you um, were able to, to do all the things that uh, a person who received one of those pieces of paper would be expected to do. You have satisfied all the requirements. You just didn't have to put up with bullshit. I mean, if, if I carry myself the most improper way, I'm sure I could probably get myself into jail and spend Thanksgiving in jail for weed. Right. But then you, you wouldn't be able to get high in jail. That's not true. It's called contraband. No. Even even at the local level. I mean, <laughs> last time I was in the drunk tank, um, and the and finally the guards came back. They're like, "All right, I've been up and down this hall three times. Y'all done smoking the weed yet?" <laughs> And there's not even smoking in there. Right. Well, I know. I've I've been to jail before. A few times. I, said, I did I did time in LA County during one of my tours of California. That was the most peaceful twelve hours of my life. <laughs> That's why I love Texas. Texas never threw me in jail. All I ever got in Texas was warning. But I was normally wearing a hat like this, too, and boots. And so if you're wearing a hat and boots, probably get a pass. You might. It depends. Unless you're like, you know, Ben Shapiro or something, showing up at DFW with a hat. Because at that point, we know that you're you're all hat and no cattle, buddy. Just lose the hat. All hat, no cattle. That's one of those Texas isms. Is it? I'm not familiar with that one yet. Of course, this isn't. I don't think this is cattle country necessarily. No, you're you're down in Cajun, Texas, the Piney Woods. Yeah, it's, yeah, that'd be the best way to describe it. Cajun, I'm talking. Texas. What I'm talking is like West Texas type. You know, Midland, Odessa. Right. You know, bum fuck a holio out there. It is a large hey, look at state. That, look at that city slicker with his 10-gallon hat. That boy's all hat and no cattle. You know what Texas doesn't have? There's one right. thing that Texas doesn't have. Zoning laws. No. I'm pretty sure they have those in, in various municipalities. Yeah, I think it depends on the county. Right. There are like 250 fucking counties or something. Was it 154 counties in Texas? I don't know, something ridiculous. It's like 367 counties or something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's some it's, ridiculous it's, number. It's ridiculous. Fuck. Texas has no mountains. I still can't believe, like, we left out in the morning and drove all day long almost ran out of gas coming back from booger or whatever the fuck it's called to amarillo and never left the fucking state oh. 
crazy. What? That's like 12. Well, you can do that in California, too. But I, those are really maybe Montana. But I don't know. Montana's like a lot of that area is undeveloped, so there's no daytime speed limits. So I'd imagine you can get across Montana going, you know, east west pretty yeah, damn fast. That's big sky country. Yeah. But like Well, it's also no speed limit country. Just Yeah. There's nowhere in, in the continental United States that's bigger than Texas. No. It's redonkulous. And I did get an email and an invite to go visit a friend in Dallas. And I don't know how to break it to him that uh, I used to be ambivalent about it. But as time goes on, the older I get, the more I fucking hate Dallas. And if I never go back to Dallas, won't shed a tear. Hmm. Dallas has no appeal to me. It's just. To me, Dallas exemplifies the absolute worst in urban sprawl. Yeah. And when I say Dallas, I'm talking about North Dallas going up to I fucking mean, Plano it's... and goddamn Denton yeah. and all that shit. Collin County. Dallas made me uh, quit my traveling party sales job. Yeah. That's how bad Dallas is. And how much I hate Dallas. Dallas ruined one of the best jobs I ever had. Yeah. I mean, it, in a way, Fort Myers, Florida was kind of like that for me, too, because I loved my job, but I had to leave. I have strategically avoided Florida my entire life. <laughs> kind, of, kind of similar to what I've done with New York City. God, it was so bizarre down there. But, I mean, it's... South Florida and North Florida are like two completely different states. I've heard that. No, and, and you could even make the argument it's four, well, it's three different states, really, because you've got North Florida and you've got East Coast and West Coast down on South Florida. Because, you know, Tampa down to Fort Myers is total, hits totally different from Homestead, South Beach up to like, you know, Daytona. Right. And then you've got Orlando, which is just a freak of nature. It doesn't really feel like Florida and Orlando to me. It's weird. It's just What does it feel like? Freeways and fucking tourists everywhere. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it's it's tourist destination because that's where Epcot is, right? Yeah, and Disney World and Universal Studios. Yeah, yeah. Sea World. It's like going out to uh, Los Angeles, right? Because they got they got all of that shit all over the place in Los Angeles too. Yeah, Disneyland and and yeah. again the Universal Studios and all that shit. Yeah. Fairy tale land, fantasy intensified. So, I fully will expect. That not only Satan Yahoo, but Yoav Gallant as well, will go on fuck you tour in America and coming soon. Just to totally give the middle finger to the ICC. The same ICC that issued an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin Hmm. for child abduction and crimes against Ukrainian humanity. Um, And... I haven't seen anybody picking up Vladdy Poots for that ICC warrant. So, no, uh, was he in? Uh, was he in Peru this past week for the the big meeting yes. where they were showing showing off the autonomous port? Yeah, yeah, because um, that's uh, China's new um, Belt and Road Initiative, their deep mm-hmm. water port in Peru, um, and. Peru and Bolivia have rail lines that connect to each other, and Bolivia has rail lines that connect to Brazil. But 
Bolivia's rail system is in two sections, an eastern section and a western section, because running through the middle of Bolivia is the fucking Andes Mountains, and they don't have a rail line over the Andes through there. There, there used to be a rail line over to Chile from Brazil, hmm. but that rail line is no longer in service. Um, been out of service for at least 30 years. Um, the Intercontinental. Um, so they'll, the Chinese are talking about building an intercontinental. So basically the Chinese are now talking about doing the same thing from Peru going east across from the Pacific coast all the way to the Atlantic coast and Brazil at Sao Paulo, doing the same thing the Chinese did in the opposite direction when they hit the east coast of Africa Hmm. at uh, Dar es Salaam. And built the uh, Tazara Railway uh, all the way to Zimbabwe and into the Belgian Congo, or what's called the DRC now, Democratic Republic of Congo. Right. Hooking up with the Katanga Railway. And what used goes to be called Rhodesia. To, uh, yeah, Zimbabwe Shout out was. Cecil. Happy birthday. Cecil Rhodesia. That's correct. Um, and so with that, the Chinese. Uh, which is really their first major Belt and Road initiative project before it was even called Belt Road, and that was mm-hmm. the Tazara Railway, which allowed them to have a transcontinental rail line going straight across Africa. And now they're going to do the same thing in South America, which is literally going to give them land-based transportation routes circumnavigating the globe in the global south, which... right really hasn't been done ever right because there was no there was no way to get a decent return on investment well in in, also, in the the system that that we occupied throughout the course of the 20th century and most of the 19th century and 18th century and all of that the business model of railroading was private ownership of the railroads And so when it came to railroad lines being built in Central and South America and Africa, being built by Americans and Britons and French and Italians and so forth, like Italy in the case of uh, Ethiopia coming in from Eritrea and Djibouti and all these rail lines that were built were they... There's no cooperation. They're often different gauge railroads. And so, Hmm. you know, like going back to uh, the Belgian Congo and the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, you know, they've got like six different rail railways, none of which are connected to each other. Many of them are at different gauges because they're built by different railroad barons. And they just go to their mines and wherever they have land to be clear cut for timber or open pit surface mining or whatever. Um, And so. Right. It was always in service of transporting a resource. So so this whole thing of building standard gauge rail lines and connecting all the countries together, that's just been a pipe dream for decades. And now. So. China is actually making that happen in Africa and now in South America. Right, which leads me to the question, why? Why now? Why why is it something that needs to be done now? What What is going to change that makes this necessary? Well, because the primary purpose of railroads is not to move passengers. It is to plunder resources. Always has been. So when they talk about building standard gauge railroad, I'm not distracted by the 20 or 30 passenger coaches and two or three locomotives that are going to pull their cool little fucking passenger train. What? One a day? Two a day? Tops? And, and, you know, you can look at... um, Even in the case of... um, uh, Société Nationale Chemin de Fer, SNCF. They went down. That's the uh, French National Rail 
people that build the the TGV train Grand Vitesse train of great speed, the fast train in France. Um, and they went down and built the uh, rail lines in Morocco, connecting Rabat and Casablanca and Fez and other places around Morocco um, with basically French TGV. Um, it's ONCF instead of SNCF. But, um, and again, it's all standard gauge railroad. And the selling point of the rail, of course, is the high speed um, passenger rail. But what you don't see is the literal thousands of ore cars and gondolas and the hundreds upon hundreds of freight locomotives that are all being brought in because there's all this lithium and barium and coal and diamonds and gold and just countless resources to be plundered all across the global south mm. and well and in the case china of, of is Africa. the world's factory you know yeah. china is the world's factory they've got all the dirty industries monopolized now so you know yeah, and Africa's about to become the world's breadbasket. That's right. That's one of the things with the, the weather shifting. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, aquifers in the Sahara that have been dry, as far as we know, for centuries, millennia even, that are now suddenly starting to fill up. And places where it has been desert previously are now becoming much less arid, more temperate, and beginning to, they literally to grow vegetation. Just had, they just had flash flooding in parts of the Sahara that hadn't seen yeah. rain in, in decades. Yeah. And then got, you know, two, three inches of rain in one day, which, again, is just unconscionable. And so now there's huge lakes and stuff that are still haven't evaporated. Um, right. Again, very strange. Which, which to um, me, would seem to point to the... The, the fact that, that climate change itself is real, but that's because climate migrates mm -hmm. across the planet. So, like, any, anywhere that, that right now is, is like a, a tropical jungle will probably be a desert at some point. I've always wondered and when they talk about, like, well, this is a 1,000 year flood and this is a 5,000 year flood. Like they've been talking with the uh, water levels of the Pigeon Forge River and the Nolichucky River with the, you know, the, the catastrophic Hurricane Helene flooding. Um, and they don't have hydrographic or river level records going back 5,000 years on the Nolichucky or the French Broad. Hmm. And when it comes to meteor meteorological records, well, there's a word. That again, what? Not even a hundred years in some cases. Yet meteorology again and climatology are put forth as these totally legitimate sciences when they just don't have the data sets to make informed analysis. No. of meteorological and climate patterns when climate and meteorology is so variable over the millennia when you look at the geologic record in stone and petrified stumps and everything else so i mean it's what data sets they do have of temperature and pressure and precipitation and storm events is 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 negligible compared to the meteorological record so i mean it's and of course when you when you go back in time you find out that actually comparing today to previous records with ice cores and stuff taken from antarctica we're going into a slight ice age right now mm -hmm. um and so no, no surprise virtually everything you're told is the opposite of what's true we're not we're not going into a global warming period we're actually going into a slight ice age that's um, that's what the the trends would appear to indicate yes leonard nimoy got it right back in the yeah. 60s 
Yeah. Never thought I'd hear myself say that. I was going to remix that song that Spock did, Leonard Dean Moy, the ballad of Bilbo Baggins. I thought you did. I got you to play that one time on a yeah. request. And, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't. I just... That, that's like all the requests I get to remix Metallica. It's not going to happen. People actually request Metallica remixes? Yeah, like where I get my gas. And the chick was like, you should uh, you should uh, do some EDM remixes with Metallica. Do, do you ever and ask immediately, them why? Immediately, I had that like black licorice taste in my mouth. I'm like, ugh. Oh, but it's not that I don't like Metallica. There's some yeah. songs that I like, but it's Metallica. Mm. Do I really have to explain? I don't know. I wouldn't think so. I don't know. I mean, I, I'll just I'll, I will, I'll throw this out as the last word: whiskey in a jarro. Come the fuck on. Whiskey in a jar. Yeah, man. Come on, dude. Come on. <sighs> so what else you got this week? Oh, wow. We're well, like um, 90 minutes in. Steve Williams did not like win governorship, and it was the Republican dude instead of, fuck, I don't even. I think Sherrod Brown beat Bernie Moreno because he spent just... Are they still figuring all that shit out? They haven't counted all the votes yet? Not sure. Good God, it's almost the end of the month. I could look up to see the the fake vote numbers for the fake governor for the fake state government or the fake Senate race for the fake... Yeah, I just... I don't know, man. I... It's so fake and gay. It's just boring anymore. The hmm. political races between all these completely powerless fucking idiots that are just enriching themselves. Insider stock tip trading. I mean, look at Pelosi as a prime example. Dude. I, I would love to, to fucking mirror her trades just for like five years. That's no, all I would shit. need is five years. My God, she made out better than fucking Biff from Back to the Future with the goddamn uh, gambling book, you know? Like, fuck. Yeah. This bitch is picking winners every time like she's got Biff's fucking sports almanac. What the fuck, man? I heard Kathy Wood uh, calls her for tips. Yeah. And then there's Half been all the this hysteria about uh, wobbly Bobby RFK Jr. or Booby Kennedy, as we like to call him. I, uh, I actually think. I th- I think that's that's going to go to uh, Senate confirmation. I do. I see that happening, because that's going to be a spectacular show, and oh, you yeah. know everybody's going to want to watch it. My God, they've already um. Oh, what's his name? From Ohio here, um, God, names on the tip. Line. Jim Jordan. Oh, that Jim asshole. Jordan, fucking congressional subcommittee on fucking nuts and assholes or whatever. Right. And I've seen a couple of uh, days of Bobby Kennedy. Well, I was talking about it with you, you know, where Bobby Kennedy got into it with Letitia James, the Congress lady from. The U.S. No, no, no. Letitia Island. James is a uh, prosecutor in New York. You're talking about um, Stacy Plaskett. Stacy Plaskett. That's it. Yeah, I got I got them mixed up. Stacy Plaskett, the mouthy bitch. Similar archetypes, yes, but they are different people. Um, yeah, that's it. Plaskett, Congresswoman Plaskett. Uh, going back and forth with Bobby Kennedy and. Uh, Oh yeah, there there's so much more kabuki theater to be worked on that site. 
it's even better like i mean i would compare it to like the um oh what was that guy from the uh california district of raytheon adam Schiff. Mm -hmm. he was the one that like shepherded the uh the two sham impeachment trials for uh trump what was it uh, one was over the uh phone call with Zelensky, right? Something like that. Some stupid uh, shit. I don't even remember at this point. And then the other one was for... Jane... Was it for Jane? I don't State? remember. I don't, I, I, was gonna say, I don't even remember. No, it couldn't have been, because January 6th was after he left. That was at, these well, almost before. after, yeah. So, I guess both of them were for Russian collusion, then. Something like that. Essentially. I still don't even understand how it, it Again, it's just over the top. It, it It's so over the top, it's not even believable. Well, right. So why why do people keep participating? Well, a lot like, of people just it, want to go along to have... get along and... Do we have, I wasn't like, really going to go that way, but I kept getting nudged. <laughs> do we just have like 40% of the population that's just out there screaming, it's still real to me, damn it? I guess the pain and suffering just hasn't reached the boiling point yet. And I don't understand how. It is interesting, like, um, you know, I focus my work when I go to earn my money. I I literally have gone and done the demographic research. I went to the tiger maps at uscensus.gov to look at, you know, PCI, per capita income, um, on their tiger maps, which is their geographic information. Their digital maps, you know. And... I was looking around like Dayton because I would planned to go up and do some filming in Springfield and I've been close to Springfield, but I haven't made it into Springfield yet because I've just been striking fucking pay dirt around Wright Patterson Air Force Base and hmm. Dayton and Mason, you know, Indian Hill, just um, Lambeau Town, you know, Lamborghinis, Alfa right. Romeo, Ferraris driving. Right, people with and plenty with of wild, disposable like, income. That's where I would work too. That's well, yeah, money. and that that's where I get the twenty and thirty dollar fucking deliveries instead yeah. of running a two dollar, three dollar order for Taco Bell and in Huntington, West Virginia. I can go right. take Taco work? Bell for twenty dollars to some fuckhead living in a castle. Yeah, that's eating fucking um, cheese it cracker taco tostada. It just looks like slop like you know the cheese it cracker is that even food but it's like a cheese it cracker that's the size of like a square tostada so it's like a four inch by four inch cheese it cracker that's yeah. got the it just looks so disgusting it, it was well, taco bell so it, i made beef uh, but stew i'm like yesterday. so i'm taking this fancy motherfucker's house with that's the dog real stuff. food and of course He's speaking with a fucking Slavic accent and like rich oh, house after Lord. rich house after rich house. All these motherfuckers. None of them speak English as a first language. Like, wow. But yeah, I remember on a on a previous episode you were talking I don't know, was it about Springfield or Yeah. Well there, there's the, what I call the uh, Ohio Triangle. There's yeah. the Ohio Triangle from if you draw a triangle from Dayton, south to Cincinnati, diagonal up to Columbus, and then complete the triangle back to Dayton. Springfield's in that triangle. Well, yeah, but you were saying it's just like polyglot paradise. Yeah. Where you can go and speak just like every language that you know any day of the week. Yeah, yeah. And that that's the Ohio Triangle. And so, like, you know, I know a couple of words in Kishirwanda. Uh, which is the language of Rwanda. Kiss your Kishirwanda. what? Kishirwanda. 
or R Rwandan language, Rwanda, right? Like um, Chigari or Kigali. My, my friend Odinga says that Ahiga was from Chigari or Kigali, the capital city there. You know, had a bad genocide there between the Hutus, the, the Hutus and the Tutsis. Oh, well, yeah, I remember. I, most and, uh, most folks might not remember. The Hutus lost and the Tutsis rolled. So there you go. That's right. Um, which they, they kind of look like Tootsie Roll. But anyways. Um, well, when they wear their hair that certain way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, you know, it depends on, you know, if you can get a hotel room. Um, a hotel room on it. You should check it out. Uh, let's see um, if YouTube catches that one. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's mind boggling. Like all these rich people and they're all from like somewhere else. Hmm. But they're living the American dream in just really nice parts. Of, I mean, it's crazy how much sprawl and like roundabouts and four lanes and I'm you know survey crews everywhere, and I'm just boggled. Like, because it's kind of out of place for Ohio, because so much of Ohio, like down on the Ohio Valley. The Ohio River town, there's no development. It's just rust belt. Every other house is empty. Main Street's empty. Factories are closed. But then you get up in the Ohio Triangle where all these immigrants are being human trafficked into the area by just staggering amounts. Literally hundreds of thousands in the last few years have been trucked in to this Ohio Triangle. Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, Columbus. And I mean, they've just, you've seen towns like Yellow Spring where Dave Chappelle lives. Yellow Spring was just a bedroom community for Dayton. You know, maybe two, 3,000 people. Now it's probably 25,000 people. And, and the story repeats all around mm -hmm. Dayton and Cincinnati. Like there used to be country and farmland between Cincinnati and Dayton. Now it's just continuous fucking sprawl from Cincinnati all the way to Dayton, going up 75 and 71, all the way to Beaver Creek. And every other exit now has a Panera Bread and a Chipotle and a Starbucks, you know. So it's like, it's very different from the other parts of Ohio where, oh, well, this town just has a subway and a Pizza Hut and a McDonald's, and oh, look, there's a Wendy's. Right. Maybe they'll have an Arby's if they're super fancy. But it's nothing like the Ohio Triangle mm. or Columbus, where it's, every other block has a fucking Starbucks or a Chipotle or a Panera Bread. Money, son. Well, yeah, they're gentrified. Yeah. You know, they got uh, fancy street lights and... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all the the smart stuff. That's the what they're putting in now. Signs, and they've got the um, landscaping on the central median with flowers. And, and you know, it it does it does pair well with the Ferraris and the Lambos. You know, to have the yeah. tulip growing in the median strip. Does it? Does it? You don't see a, any uh, panhandlers or zombies or nothing in no. I mean, it's a very attractive canvas. And there's like Saks Fifth Avenue and Benetton and you know, Oh wow. So you got you got like the hoity toity shit. Okay. Oh I, I told you Ferraris and Alfa Romeos and Lambo. I didn't even I know mean, Benetton was still in business, quite honestly, but I don't, let me find out one of these shops here. Uh, I'll pull it up here. Easton. Oh, I did let folks know that uh you know, because of the, the very special anniversary episode that we yeah. registered with uh, Tiffany's. If anybody was, was looking to send us anniversary gifts, I just want to uh, urge folks that if they are planning to do that, uh, don't drag your feet because Tiffany's is going out of business. So you want to get that done before that happens. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's share the screen. Do, 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 do. 
This is what I call Lambo Town. That's my nickname for Easton, Ohio. Lambo Town. So, Easton Town Center is a shopping center and mall in Northeast Columbus, Ohio. Opened in 1999, the core buildings and streets that comprise Easton are intended to look like a self-contained town, reminiscent of American towns and cities in the early to mid-20th century. Included in the design are fountains, streets laid out in a grid pattern, surrounded by a continuous loop, and metered storefront parking. And oh. nobody owns, the, the developer still owns all the land managed by Steiner Associates, that was Nobody all the rage in Northern Virginia. Fucking yep. meters everywhere. Oh, they love those fucking parking meters. God damn. But it does not, when you're in Easton Town Center, it does not hit like some fucking American town from Mayberry, Andy no. Griffith. No, 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 because it, it's, it's, it's got, all it's, scaled. When, you, when you're in Easton here, um, uh, no, these are planned communities. Now, I, I know exactly what we're looking at here because I used to help people design their little fucking four-story condo inside these developments. This, this is all the has, new shit that they've been putting in for the last 10 years or so. Easton has marble sidewalks. They have brass fountains and roundabouts everywhere and European-style signage everywhere. This is in no way looks like that. Just sounds offensive. It in no, it, it feels like you're in France when you're in Easton, only perhaps even more gay. Like I feel like if I would if I were to pull over in a parking lot in Easton and try to masturbate, I would have to put fingers in my butthole to do that. I mean, it is Ohio. I can't do it. I can't do it. Butthole's off limits. So, um. Yeah, and maybe they remodeled it. Maybe it was originally American, and they no, no it it was laid out as a bougie fucking European little. So where this is where all the shops are. I was trying to figure out what are the shops there, mm. and I guess I'm gonna have to go and get out of fucking Wikipedia. Oh, let's go to maps. It'll be on maps. There we go. Where's that fucking god awful fountain? There's the fountain. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is where all this, the and this is a typical secret. design too. There was a place like that in uh, Fairfax. There it is, Tiffany and the Company, right in the middle. Jewelry store, Tiffany and Company. That's right. Louis Vuitton. Um, Tiffany's dot com. Victoria's Secret. Just look for the, uh, the Liberty Radio uh, page on there. Put it in the search bar. Yeah, it's real bougie. Real fucking bougie. I mean, look at the streets. That You don't... No, this is... That is a European layout, not an American layout. And, uh, like, you see all these, like, uh, anchor stores, Macy's, um... Lazarus or Belk or something, but uh, they're they're like um, it's almost like going to one of the malls in Dallas because they all have uh, parking garages. Ah, uh, well, yeah, and, because they've and, got a lot of traffic coming from outside of the planned community, which I would imagine probably sucks for the people that live in the planned community. But that's just me. The good you know, news I is use logic it to has your things out. It has really wide sidewalks. So, like, every time I've had to come and deliver anywhere around here, I always just pull right up on the sidewalk on the plaza in the middle of the fountain or pull over there because otherwise I would have to pay money to park. And I'm right. just getting out and grabbing something and getting back in or right. getting out and shoving food in somebody's face and running back out to the vehicle. And I'm rarely there for more than a minute or so. Yeah, I've, I've gotten dirty looks. and I just give dirty looks back. I, I might raise my lips and show them the full beauty of my teeth. Show them wow. your teeth. That's right. Yeah, and 
and they all run away. Show them you mean what I want business. <laughs> But it has a really awesome piano. I would probably do the exact there. same thing. Although I don't think I would I would pull on to the side. I would just park right in the middle of the street, get out and go it's do my thing. Solich, like all right. Solich Piano. Yeah. Solich Piano store right there in Eastman. And they've got like I don't know, forty or fifty grand pianos in this piano store. And uh Oh, I, every time I'm in Easton, I, I I always stop and go in there and play on the piano. I oh, I'm sure it. they love that. Yeah. Oh, he does well because they're the, the guys that run the place. There are they're big into jazz and swing. So I'll go in there and I'll play jazz and swing and sixteen bar blues and stuff on the piano. They they fucking love it. Oh, they love it. I was just thinking of all the music stores I've ever been into that are like, "What? Why are you trying to play the instruments? Get the fuck out of here!" That's how they are at Route sixty music, where I bought my keyboard, hmm. and like every time I go in there to sit down and play on a keyboard, within seconds, motherfuckers over there, well, can I help you? Are you buying something? I'm like, I was just playing one of my songs. He's like, "Oh well, so you already have a keyboard?" Yeah, he's like, so you want to buy another one? I'm like, bro, I'll, I'll just. I, obviously, you're not into supporting local artists or musicians, and I don't have the money to afford your prices. And I was just coming in and sharing some of my music. Oh no, you don't have to leave. Yeah, I, I've never been back. Route sixty music sucked my fucking balls. Mm. I'll never give them another cent. Um, but like, and music arts, they're cool as fuck with. And most places that have pianos, like there's three different hotels I play. I just walk in and sit down and start playing the piano. And they're like, oh, you're here again. They love it. I guess maybe I don't suck. Could be. I'd say if I sucked, they would tell me to get lost. You would don't think. Come back. I mean, especially in, in a neighborhood <laughs> such as this, right? Yeah. <laughs> like they know what their clientele is. They would have to. Keeps it fresh for me. Because I mean that that's that's my my defense shield. I mean, I go on Telegram and I listen to my music and I listen to Liberty Radio shows that I missed the night before because they have time when I'm delivering. I don't have signal at all. Right. And so then I have to use the navigator or, or in some cases just make a little sketch of where it's at get there, knock on the door, make sure I put it in their fucking hand, and then drive 20 minutes to the tallest mountain I can find nearby so I can get a signal and complete the fucking delivery on the app, and then go on pause again so I can get back down where there's service again. Which makes it, when I'm working, it makes it almost impossible sometimes to stay in the chat or, or listen along live. Um, oh yeah, I can imagine. Now, it's easier for me to listen with Telegram because you live stream on Telegram. But when you're listening on Telegram live stream, every 40 seconds it pauses for two seconds. Really? And then just keeps playing again. That's and it bizarre. does that on every show when it's on live. Now, once it's done and uploaded, it doesn't do that. But So, and of course, there's no engagement there. So I have to go to Rumble and listen on rumble and then i can do the rumble chat but when it's live streaming on rumble you can't do pip picture in picture hmm. so if i've got it on rumble then i don't have it on the uh doordash screen or whatever i'm delivering right and since i've got it plugged in and playing the sound from rumble i don't get any notification sound and so if I if I do that, then I'll just get a message on my text message saying, "Oh, we offered you uh, delivery for twenty dollars, but you didn't accept it in ten seconds, so we're lowering your acceptance rate now because there was no sound, no notification, and so it's crazy. Like I literally have to keep the screen somewhere in peripheral view, and then just keep checking the screen of the phone, like literally every five seconds. 
And oh, sometimes it'll give you 10 seconds, 10 fucking seconds to accept the delivery. And those are the like 15, 20, 25 dollar deliveries. You got 10 seconds to jump on it. Well, right. I mean, because you're, if you're going to be conditioning humans, you got to, you know, you can't, you can't half ass your way through it. The, the cool thing make for sure me is those fuckers are paying attention. It's a real challenge to try to figure out how to make money doing DoorDash. I got to say, it's, it's a, it's almost a Rubik's so Cube. Is day. it, is it getting harder as time goes by? Um, I think it's getting harder to make Top Dasher and keep Top Dasher. But once you have Top Dasher status, it is better money. Um, but you have to be in the right place at the right time. And then so if you hang out at the Taco Bell, you'll take $2 Taco Bell run. If you hang out at the fucking Hibachi Japanese Steakhouse, delivering to fucking Lambo Town, you'll get 20 and $30 orders. So you can make better than $25, $30 an hour, which is better money than really any other service job available in the service industry. Hmm. I know back when I was delivering pizzas, it was uh, hard money to match working at the uh, restaurants in the same area. Yeah. And well, I, I made I could so never much money on tips. Why? Yeah. Pizza tips. Like, I would go out and in one shift delivering pizza, you know, I don't know, five, six hour shift, easily rip $100, $150 in tips. <clears throat> but that's like, you know, over 30 deliveries. That's and, like a six hour shift. And. Six hours of work within the Ohio Triangle I previously described. That's going to work out to almost $200. Yeah. Whereas if you try to make that kind of tip money, because I had a job at Pizza Hut most recently, and Pizza Hut farmed out their deliveries to DoorDash and Grubhub and Uber Eats while so they had the others. Pizza Hut drivers in store. Correct. And so now all of a sudden, I'm only taking one out of every three or one out of every four deliveries and all the rest are DoorDashers and Grubhubbers and Ubers coming in and taking those pizza orders out the door. At that point, I was that's when I said, well, fuck it. I'll just quit Pizza Hut and just do DoorDash then. What's the fucking point? I mean, at this point, I'm not even making $50 per shift in tips because the majority of the deliveries are all being taken by giggers. Right. And so instead, I get to fucking wash dishes every night and sweep and mop the floor and do, you know, really shitty work. You know, right. Really shitty store. For, so for fucking, what, like $5 an hour, $6 an hour, something like that? Yeah minimum wage in Kentucky, which was, uh, Kentucky was seven twenty five an hour. All right. That wasn't far off. Now, Ohio and West Virginia have raised the minimum wage, but not Kentucky. They're still at the federal minimum wage that was raised by George W. Bush. Wow. And so it's like 525? 557. I think he put 2007, it in 2007, he raised the minimum wage from five and a quarter to seven and a quarter. Really? A whole $2? I don't even remember that. In oh, well. 2007, and it's now 2024. That's because I wasn't working for minimum wage in 2007. That's why I don't remember. Why would I pay attention to minimum wage if, I, if it has no bearing on my life? But uh, I know that's what it was. Because I was paying my chain carriers on my survey crew double the minimum wage, which is fifty dollars gotcha. now, which is actually more than double because it was seven twenty five, so seven fifty. In, anyways, um, it's not been raised in almost twenty years. 
They've not raised the federal minimum wage in almost 20 years. Not Democrats, not Republicans. It's hmm. been Republicans that have raised the minimum wage, and not Democrats. Well, some states, Weird. yeah, some states have uh, have made their adjustments, but yeah, as far as federal, they have. Well, I'm talking but about why would the federal. They? Why would the they? federal minimum wage? Yeah, right. some states have made the state minimum wage higher than the federal. Well, it sat right around five dollars for how many decades? Like it was quite a few. Yeah. It took forever to go from five twenty five to seven twenty five and I just I I don't see Trump raising the minimum wage. Eh. Again, doesn't affect my life, so I don't spend time thinking about it. I do fully well expect Trump to send out more checks, more stimulus checks, because that was a big hit. And that's a great way to get more people to buy in. Yeah, but in, see, in order UBI. to do that, you're eh, you're going to need another crisis in order to be able to spend that kind of money. Oh, well, that's no problem. America can always come up with new crises. We can just invent one that's not even a real crisis and make it a crisis anyway, like like Koofy. I mean, to this day, I don't know of a single person personally that died allegedly from coop. Yeah, I don't either. But I do know some people that died. I don't from even shock. believe the people that told me they were sick with it. But that's me. I mean, at that point, it's psychosomatic. Well, the TV said this, this, and this, and this, and I've got this, and this, and this. So according to the TV, I've got this. Well, I Jonas pro tip, turn the fucking TV off. Read Jerry Manders' Four Arguments for the Elimination of TV. Hmm. That was assigned homework, and it still is. <laughs> I'm surprised more people don't figure that out. I really am. I don't understand but, what I mean, the allure of influencers is, though. That's people. That's what I just it, again, we have. <clears throat> A nation of people who in the quote unquote public schools are essentially programmed to look to others for instruction. Yeah. Like that that is part of, of what the schools crank out is people incapable of making decisions on their own. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me at all that you see this happen. Matter of fact, it seems like, again, it was intentionally baked into the system because <coughs> what you get on the other side is the perfect atmosphere for cults to thrive in. You get a fucking nation of seekers who just want somebody to tell them what to do, what to think, where to direct their attention and their energy. It's so much instead more of figuring it out way. for themselves. It's so much more comforting that way. I mean, it, it, who's kidding who? Reality bites when you when you eat all the black pills and you wake up out of the stupor and the American dream is over and the hellacious slave landia nightmare is facing you right before your eyes, Gerald Salente. You realize the trends in the news is your ass going to camp because. They don't have any use for the American worker anymore. Replacements are already here. And so, you know, the, the real mm. question is, when does the other shoe drop? When do we get rid of more of these fucking useless eaters? A am I right, Yuval Harari? That's what I'm waiting for. Well, I mean, we're, we're approaching Matter the... Matter um, not when. Yeah, we're approaching the year that was highlighted in the Deagle report. That's right. You know, we're five weeks out. Yeah, all those weird how they knew all those population numbers are just going to start precipitously dropping. It's like everybody's going to get turbo cancer. It's like everyone's got vaccine acquired immune deficiency syndromes or mm. something. Weird. Makes me wonder if they hit their numbers. I don't know. I guess we'll I see. Don't know. 
that that's the whole problem I have with numbers at this point. I don't know which numbers to believe. I'm I'm quintessentially skeptical at this point. I'm just more skeptical, more hateful, and more high. So thank God for the weeds, or I'd be just a completely unbearable fucking asshole. And according to some, I already am. So uh, there you go. Everybody's a critic. And that's okay. I'm you know overbearing, intolerable asshole. I, I've been worse. I've been called worse. I have too. This week, <laughs> uh, you know, fucking asshole works sometimes. Feels good. Okay. Feels good. Well, it lets you know that you've got people's attention. Well, yeah. That's, you fuck that's around and you part. find out. That's right. That, and that's how it works. That's right. And I, I believe we've reached the, the end of the runway. It's, it's time to take back off again, Harrison Ford. And that's this right. time, let's that's not all take I got. off from the taxiway. We'll be back for uh, open lines tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, then it's vacation time for a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, then we'll be back when? Uh, first week of December. December the something. The something. I don't know right off the top of my head. I'm not going to look it up right now because it's after midnight on the East Coast. I think it's December the 5th, but I'm not sure. That might be. That might be right. But we're on tonight or tomorrow night. We'll figure it out then. I mean, technically it is tonight on the East Coast now. Good night, everybody. Woohoo!